All right, looks like we're going. So hello everybody. And in this week's uh, NOS TST meeting, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, specifically, um, this, we're going to discuss how to maintain and version the various system level documentation. There's a couple of different alternatives on the table, and some of those have been discussed over email chains. And so we'll uh, talk about that. And also, we will discuss um, the proposed uh, agenda for the Onos Build event, which is going to happen in the beginning of November. And uh, before we start, I think David had a shout out. Uh, you... Yeah, I'd like to give uh, Karan a shout out. He has launched the, the version one of the ambassador portal. So please take a look at that and get feedback. He's going to be around, not in the office, but he'll be around working remotely for the next few months, working on the next iteration on that. And um, it's really great to have that because the ambassador program launched uh, uh, about a month or so ago now. And we've gotten a good uptake around 20 people signed up. Uh, so far, and, and a lot, uh, a lot of enthusiasm for for other people joining too. So it's great to be able to have the, the portal to allow us to leverage that group of people who want to be our representatives uh, in their areas. So thank you to Grant. And then I would also give a future shout out to somebody who uh, uh, is interested in stepping up to help us with some con uh, some uh, data analytics. We have a, a couple of different places we could use some help with um, analytics. If there's somebody who's interested in that. Uh, we'd love your help. There's an, a number of different projects I have in mind, but one in particular is relevant to the conversation we've had recently on the TST list about module owners. Um, we think that there's a lot we could do with analyzing the um, current data that's in Garrett to help us uh, uh, find good candidates for future module owners, and we just need somebody to kind of figure out the right way to do that analytics. Uh, so if anybody's interested in stepping up and helping with that, I think that would be a huge help. So. Reach out to me. It's David at uh, OwenLab.us if you're interested in, in that. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, um, do you want to do, drive the discussion for the? the sure. I mean, I think I after a bot can speak to the technical side of things, but I'll, I'll set the the, the context. So. Going back a little bit, you know, we had done, I think we shared here at a previous meeting a few months ago, we had done at the beginning of the year a, a survey of the community to figure out what was working and what was not working, what could be improved. And one of the things that we heard pretty consistently uh, across the board was that um, community members would benefit from improved documentation. So Ayaka Bob, Luca, and others have stepped up to, to make that happen. And based on uh, the discussions with that group, one idea that we came up with, and again, there's a link there to a thread on the Onos Docs uh, a mailing list if you want to see the whole discussion. One of the ideas that had come up was how do we be more intentional about making sure the documentation exists? And the idea was if we add it into the code review process, that's an existing well-established process where we could make sure that we had you know, somebody's eyes on making sure the documentation for a, a given commit existed. So. There's a lot of technical details that I'll hand off the conversation for, but in, at a very high level, that was the idea. Instead of just hoping that documentation for part of the code exists, making sure that somebody's actually verifying that, yes, in this commit, I see that there's some documentation that's relevant for it, therefore, we can go ahead with the, you know, the check-in. And this is specifically to system level, uh, like design level documentation, not necessarily user level of yeah. like for example uh, aimed at administrator and how do I configure this particular subset yeah and subset I don't know if there's a maybe we need to define the terms a little bit I don't know if that is a if there's a clear clearly defined boundary that everybody agrees this is system level this is user level you know because it's all kind of on the wiki right now but but yeah that was the idea yes that you know this is very a specific subset of the overall documentation and this is not trying to take anything away from other documentation that already exists on the so, wiki. So I guess when I first replied to the email chain on this discussion that you, that you started on this discussion, I was, uh, I guess I interpreted system level documentation that it was basically like a um, system level doc for administrators to know how to deploy this. So yeah. basically like an administrator, <laughs> because that is something we've been struggling with, right? And that's yeah. something that wiki is not really doing that great of a job for us, at least in my view, for, uh, because it, uh, Basically, we have to re resort on creating snapshots on the wiki, and but also 
means that the documentation, there's duplication, and it's easy to, it's, it's harder to manage and harder to find and harder to sort of refactor. Uh, because making changes, then you have to make changes in five different places if you have five releases. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what's and then things like that. So that's what I thought we were talking about. I guess I was not necessarily, a, and that's not necessarily, I, I, I guess this is what I interpreted from the community feedback that that's what we were lacking, not necessarily that we were lacking design level documentation. But, well, but maybe I misunderstood. And maybe this is where it's getting a little bit over my technical depth. I don't know if my doctor or Bob wanted to step in, but. At least, like, I guess there were two main kinds of feedback. One is we need more information about how to get a complete movie up and you know up to speed enough to write apps quickly. So that's okay. kind of a very catch-all generic, yes. um, uh -huh. you know, item. And then there's also that thing about okay, we don't really know which APIs are used for what. So there's also the lack of the API sign. So I think there are those two main. Well, at least that's what I saw from the feedback. Um, yeah, and, and as for this thread, I guess. Um, I was kind of having like similar interpretation as Thomas, I guess. Um, like, okay, given this own OS version, how do I build it and mm -hmm. launch it and configure it? Kind of. Um, so maybe yeah, not okay, I guess yeah. just to do to, 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 to some big things, right? There's the admins. Uh, uh, how 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 <coughs> to use basically, right? There's a there's developer. Are you sharing a document by any chance? Um, no, I am not. Uh, thank you. Um, thanks. Post a link, maybe, so I can see what you're typing. Yeah, it's it's the link that's in the invite, but uh, I'm gonna oh. share it uh, for everybody else to see. Sure. Thanks. Are you sharing now? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Um, this right. Uh, I think. Okay. Um, and then there is the, at least roughly speaking, there is the. And I guess I view the how to get started is kind of like almost a site, basically just um, tutorials, right? Isn't that? And I guess um, in terms of the APIs, I was kind of thinking, you know, it, it, are you talking about something similar to, you know, what map pages are, for example, for Linux? I mean, it's kind of like a bunch of scattered, you know, various topics. They don't quite, you know, belong to the wiki, I guess, because they're just like, these cut and dry things that really should be kind of packaged with the system. And I mean, that, that's kind of another, I mean, yeah. I, I guess I'm, I'm also a bit uh, confused about what's exactly, I guess, what, what exactly is supposed to be packaged if we're talking about so, this yeah. context, I guess. Yeah, so I guess I wanted to make sure, the reason I listed these, I don't want to necessarily get on a huge, at least wanted to sort of create kind of buckets and figure out you are here. This is what we're talking mm -hmm. about. <laughs> so I guess when I was when when you launched the the the, um, the thread, I thought we were talking about this, but I could easily see clearly there's need need for improvement in all of these buckets. I'm not trying to say one is more important than other, but that's what I was talking about. And this is where I was thinking this is where we is not a good tool for us for the first. And uh, it would be better to use some sort of a um, still perhaps collaborative or versioned, mm -hmm. but also something that allows for potentially uh, well, snapshotting, but also potentially um, sharing uh, the content because yeah. some of the content won't change. And leveraging the content without creating snapshots so that you can, even, because what happens, 1.5 goes out, and we're all feverishly working on 1.5, let's say, right? And then goes out without some of the documentation being ready. I mean, after all, it's an open source project. It's sometimes released really up before it's documented, right? Sure. Uh, that doesn't, that we should not place a barrier now for documentation not ever be able to be created for it. Right. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and then, so so they been so coming up with the mechanism to, do, to document this. Uh, clearly, for developer docs, uh, this is oh, sorry. So, so I, I don't know. Without going into huge level of details, what is it that, at least in your views, guys, what did, what was the specific problem that you were trying to solve when you launched the thread? I just told you what I interpreted it as, but that may be wrong. So, what was it that you had in mind? Maybe three of you. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear more from Bob and Yaka because, again, they understand it on a 
that hold totally different level than I do. Again, my thought was, how do we add some intentionality to make sure documentation existed, whereas right now there doesn't seem to be that kind of process checkpoint. You know, it's, if people get to it, they get to it, that's great, but you know, it, it's more optional right now. So is there a way to, where in an existing flow could we add some, a check? That was my thought. I don't know, Bob, what, what are you thinking? Oh, do I get to talk now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah um, so, one uh, a challenge with uh, sort of documentation, reading documentation to begin with, is uh, sort of bootstrapping it and starting it from nothing. And uh, what we sort of found talking about documentation is that there was no way for anybody to start writing. Uh, developer documentation without, or really developer or user documentation for that matter, to really start writing any doc, kind of documentation without reading the code. So that was very, a very frustrating roadblock that uh, we have in on us, which is that nobody can figure out how to use or program the system because there's not any documentation. But we can't write the documentation because there's no way of, there's no information besides the code itself. Uh, so, so that is to say, so, which means that it's, it's a huge roadblock for anybody who wants to contribute to the documentation. And so following up on what, what David said, the question is, you know, how do we integrate this into our process? And what I think Brian and Ayaka and I were talking about a bit was saying, well, look, if we look at things like the, uh, you know, it seems that there should be a documentation requirement corresponding to a code requirement for a feature to be included in us. And so that means that any you know, pull request or something in Garrett should probably not be pulled into the code unless there's a minimum level of documentation for it, um, which includes certainly the Java doc, which explains the API calls, but also sort of a minimal explanation, which could be generated. I don't know how this could be, how this, what's the best way to do this? It could be part of Javadoc, could be readmes like you find in the Linux kernel, but it could be uh, something on the page on the wiki, you could use anything anywhere, but just sort of enough kind of information, enough sort of base information to help people understand the feature and understand how to use it and also possibly understand how it's implemented if they want to change it or modify it in the future. So I, I think the idea, I guess, the, the basic idea, which I, I think makes a lot of sense, is to say in Garrett, just as we, before we accept code, we want to make sure that it's reviewed, we want to make sure that it builds correctly, and we think maybe there should be a documentation checkoff item of some sort. And uh, it's not entirely clear what that should be, but it seems that that's a logical place to put it, where if, if person X wants to submit feature Y, they just give you the code and say, oh, well, the code is great. Can you also give us the documentation for it, whatever documentation you think is necessary? And then the documentation is reviewed, and we say, yeah, okay, you know, for, for like a user-facing feature, that means it has to be in the wiki, say. For a uh, change, for a complicated Onos kernel algorithm, we think maybe there should be a design document or readme or something in the or there should be comments in the code or something. Uh, should be perhaps co-located in the code. For, uh, and for anything else, for any other piece of code, we want to make sure the Java docs all there at a very minimum, bare minimum. But also say, well, beyond the Java doc, is there additional documentation that we need, and do we have it for feature X? So that's, that's basically the idea that I had, which is that if somebody, you know, like me, I submit a feature to us, and you say, oh, that's a really great feature, Bob, but you've added all these CLI commands. We want to make sure that the CLI commands are documented. They all have to have help strings, and they should be documented in the CLI command documentation, wherever that is. You know, what maybe it's generated automatically, but we just want to make sure that that's that's there and there's a sanity check. And so that basically uh, sort of puts a it, it sort of the idea is that it primes the pump, mm -hmm. that it says that we don't accept any feature into us that doesn't have a minimum level of documentation. Yeah. So I guess the the key in here is to establish what the minimum is, right? I mean, it's, you sort it's of like give it would be different for for different features. <laughs> Like for some things, like for just you know changes in uh, for changes in an API, like oh we've added we've added uh, we've virtualized this, and so now every API call has a different you know virtual network parameters. And we just want to make sure that Java docs are all accurate. Like that. 
you know, and that, it, that it explains it correctly. You know, if it's, for minor changes, maybe just updating the Java docs, okay. Uh, for a user-facing feature, probably we want to make sure that there's um, either user-facing documentation or an explanation somewhere that will enable someone to write the more detailed user-facing documentation. Uh, so, so that, I think, was the idea. And thinking about where it is, you know, I, I think that depends on what the feature is. Um, my own thinking is that documentation for the code, sort of design document, you know, sort of design document, design notes on the code probably should be co-located with the code one way or the other. Um, you know, and my example sort of is the Linux kernel where major new patches like, you know, network namespaces, for example, Eric Biederman wrote a bunch of code for it, but he also wrote sort of this text explanation of the design of the network namespace subsystem sort of how it worked, what, what the changes were, and that's like checked into the code as just a text readme. Now, admittedly, Linux kernel doesn't have a job, doesn't, doesn't have like javadoc or equivalent for C, so it's just an ASCII file. But so we might, with, in our case, you know, maybe it belongs to the javadoc, maybe it's, I don't know where it would go, but it seems like co-located with the code is a good idea because then it can be updated when the code's updated, although in practice it hardly ever is, so it doesn't matter. But at least it's sort of co-located, and it's also sort of the right context. Like, if you're a kernel developer, you know, most kernel developer, like looking at, oh, I don't know, the intent system, subsystem for new, some sort of new sort of new module that's part of the intent subsystem, you know, it'd be nice to, when you're looking at the code, to say, oh, well, the, the sort of design documentation, sort of overall overview of the subsystem is right there in, you know, in mm -hmm. IntelliJ or, or, you know, Eclipse, and I can see it right there. That, right. that sort of seems like a logical so, place okay. for it. So is it, so, now I'm in. Clearly, that makes sense. So you already, I guess, answered my question. So, things, and you, you are already alluded to uh, something that's going to lead to the next point of discussion. So clearly, not only depending on a feature, it really depends on what sort of the minimum expectation is, what is sort of some of the code, to some of the documentation. And in some cases, we already are, um, we're enforcing, in some cases, we're not. But it also, it also you pointed out fairly clearly, is that Depending on what the documentation is, it's going to be maintained a little bit differently. So clearly, Java docs and inline comments, um, potentially some of the CLI help strings, that's all going to be in line with the code, in code, in the same repository, in the yeah. same files. Uh, but but uh, but it should be also fairly obvious that we're not going to be able to place uh, um, you know, user uh, the user level docs in in line with code, right? Necessarily. Yeah, it's, it, it could be done, but it seems like not a great idea. That's why I'm, that's my, that's yeah. my thinking. Yeah. Also, so, okay. yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, just as it's all, um, in line with the readme text files, um, in our case, it could be in some kind of markup language under like some directory. So if it's like a new thing, like, you know, with the commits, you can check, okay, there's this, you know, file in this directory, for example. <coughs> I mean, yeah. So, it's um, okay. flexible, I think. So, I mean, just just to be clear, I mean, clearly we need the tutorials and things like that, and how to get started as a developer. But I think for the point for purpose of this discussion, is it okay if you just scratch it from the conversation and context right now? Is that right? Is that fair? So because I think right now for new contributions, right, we're talking about either how is it implemented, how do I maintain it, so that's the algorithmic type stuff. And clearly, I mean, inline comments should be fine. But also, then, what, what if there's any other collateral like design docs and uh, design diagrams and stuff like that? You know, so that's a question where we place those. Uh, if it's uh, for the developer docs, be, clearly Java docs are going to be in line with the code. But what if do, should we have a sort of a API reference, something that tells you about each subsystem, what does it do, and how do you, how would you use it, and what, what it's supposed to be used for, and how would you use it? It's almost like a programmer's guide. Yeah, yeah. Right? Almost, and the, the certainly need that. And yeah, have it. and so so, but the thing is, it clearly goes beyond just what's available in an API uh, or Java docs themselves, right? Usually, you need some sort of outer skeleton, but but you want to maintain them. But the thing is, you don't want to maintain the body of it individually apart from the code. It seems like at least the the overall framework and the context that it set is clearly manually crafted. At least I would think would be. But then the individual details, if you're going to hand, maintain those there, then it's going to be it's very laborious and it's going to eventually depart from what the reality of the code is. So I think it, it, it seems like to me that there's a need for some sort of a hybrid approach between manual skeletal framework and narrative 
inside which you would then inject what the actual code, uh, what the actual APIs are, right? Is that, or am I? I mean, I mean, ideally, the, the, the manual part would be, you know, some overall design or architecture goals uh, that, you know, rarely if ever change. Externally relevant semantics, right? Exactly, yes, right? Much. And then all they do is, you know, point to, you know, like automatically point to relevant packages where yeah. you have more detailed documentation. Exactly. Which yeah. is tied to the code and, you know, whenever you change that, you know, you have to That's update that. Exactly. I wanted to make sure to point out specifically that, A, there is a need for manual manually maintain content apart from yeah. the code and be not creating an overlap uh, you know to with the with the Java docs yeah. because um, and so clearly there's a need for some fusion of those two. That that's how I would think it would be for at least the for the developer docs. And for, for and then for the administrative user docs, I think the similar sort of thing might, might exist, right, in the sense where same relationship, except instead of talking about APIs, instead we're going to have to provide overall context for, for how the different parts of the system are to be used uh, in deployments um, and what their functions are, and then also how you potentially configure and deploy them. And this is where potentially CLIs and REST APIs might come in, right? And then again, without necessarily creating an overlapping set of documentation, because our, job, our REST APIs, for example, and even CLIs are essentially sort of dynamically documented. We have help strings are in the code. Uh, we have the Swagger docs, uh, which actually are scraped off of uh, Java docs. Uh, that all provides automated way of documenting it. But, but it's again, just like with Java docs, uh, both the CLIs and REST APIs are lacking sort of the overall framework that puts it together. How do I use this? I think the model that we have now is not actually terrible. It's just that the, there's not as much content as we would like, and that is that is that sort of the kind of human human written long form text that, that's tends the, to that's be the... it tends to be you know maintained separately in the wiki and is versioned and, and is versioned on a release basis and it's forked and can be and updated. It's, it's actually in not uh, and how it's versioned on per release basis it's not conducive to encouraging documentation to come late because once it comes late it never comes almost and also it's not conducive to um, it, it, it does it does not do the common parts well, and it does not do the branching parts well. So it's, I don't think Wiki is basically not a good tool, in my view, to continue to use. It's, not, it's great for developing collaborative content, but as a user guide, it fails miserably. So I think what we are lacking is sort of the, like you said, the long text for both the user level documentation and developer level documentation. I think that's where we're lacking most. Uh, frankly, I would suggest that even for the purpose of the discussion, Yes, the design docs are very, very important, but ultimately inline codes could be considered, you know, good enough. And and I would suggest that that's not where our biggest point is, at least. That's my interpretation. So I would suggest we actually scratch it from discussion and focus on those two. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you want to dis what you want to discuss now, but uh. well, I mean, I'm just I'm just simply suggesting trying to bring focus to this. So I don't, but I, well, the reason I'm asking with a questioning tone is because I'm. I'm making an assumption here that let's say yes, tutorial is important, but that's not where our greatest point is. The design docs are important, but that's not necessarily where our greatest point is, at least according to my interpretation of the feedback. So we should, in my view, I think at least how I saw the feedback, the administrator and developer level docs is where we are lacking. And both of those are lacking, what they're lacking there is well, first of all completeness and also overall framework, how to put it together, because wiki tends to be fairly of a shotgun and dispersed. And so it doesn't produce a very cohesive sort of a document for neither of these purposes. I'm, I'm not sure why that, I, I don't, I'm not sure why that would be the case. I mean, it's, it seems that the wiki is a tool, you, you can you can use it however you like. If you want to make it, you know, if you want to organize it well, you can. And that's kind of one of the things we've been Looking at it, is, it just requires you know, someone to kind of curate the content and make sure that it yeah, yeah, but it's right? but it's it's yeah. an issue of of of, cure, of effort in curation. It's not an effort of the tool not enabling you to curate. Sure, but okay. So let's say let's say okay. So okay, yeah, but 
least the way things are versioned right now, how do you propose video versioning in the context of the wiki? Because clearly the spaces are not something that can be used effectively. I, that's not really clear to me. Like I, I think it's the same as, as maintenance branches on the code that, that, or support branches, that the old wiki is the support branch for the last release. And just as you have to cherry pick code changes from master into, into previous release, previous support branches, you also have to, um, have to move documentation changes from master to support branches or from support branches to master on the wiki. It, it kind of works the same way. Um, it's, it's not quite as convenient because there's no wiki cherry pick command. So it sort of has to be done manually. But the, in principle, you know, the, the branching works identically. It's just that it requires more policing because, you know, the, well, there's no review or... Yeah, and also we'll limit it on the, 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 the JIRA, the logistically, the, the snapshot or clone workspace uh, um, command does not work in crashes. So, for example, like we were unable to create, uh, I think it was not even GoldenEye was the release preceding it. Emu had issue cloning because there was just simply too much I don't, know, I don't know. It failed to clone, so we we'll never actually have. Since EMU, we don't have, we don't have any documentation. Um, so basically, all we uh, at least for individual releases, we have just whatever we have just the master since EMU. Really, that's well, that's that's is why I that's think irritating. I mean, the reason we you know I didn't pick Jira, but the reason why people wanted to go with Jira over MediaWiki is they said it was more robust and better supported. We could get bug fixes in a timeline and they better. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, so, I mean, anyway, it seems that, you know, in principle, it is intended to work. Yes, Whether it has okay, bugs okay, that right. yeah. from working, but I, I mean, I'm suggesting that in principle, the workflow seems eminently sensible. Um, you know, whether we need to change tooling is sort of a question, but, but the idea, there's nothing intrinsically wrong, it seems, with the idea of, you know, Working, in, uh, you know, having a support branch, and you know, doing changes in the support branch and master is necessary. <coughs> with yeah, so, so there's two, two, two problems then. So, at least in my view, first of all, getting over some of these, uh, I guess, tactical details, which could clearly be, um, if if they if you don't get over those, then that could clearly prove to be block a blocker, serious blocker, right? Uh, so it, it, let's say that we do have a main mechanism that's working for creating these branches within wiki or workspaces, whatever you want to call it. So then the second it's issue, which is the version, is that the feature doesn't work. So, so let's say let's say that the feature wrong. does work. So then the second one is then how do how do we propose that to be uh, because there's no cherry pick and there's no automated merges. Uh, how we propose that we police and 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 sort of current or enforce um, development of the documentation and sort of to make sure that it proceeds in a coherent fashion. Well, I, I think the logical, I mean, what, what David and Ayaka and I suggested is that we have a documentation backlog and that the documentation backlog, the person who's working on a documentation backlog item does the right thing, <laughs> you know, in, in a sense, in a sense that the backlog item should be, you know, Update support branch and master for feature X, you know, or or up, you know, documentation for feature change X, and just be aware that this is what versions it. I mean, whenever you do a documentation change, you should be aware of which versions of it affects and do it in the support. I mean, just like a code change, right? Do it in the support branch and then master. Yeah. But the problem is that that documentation is always the last thing that always falls off the, the end of the train. Right? Right. It never gets done. Well, that's so that's like, sort of a different a different issue, and that's that's something yeah, we, we talked about as well, which is that we think there should be a, a documentation review as a prerequisite yeah. for the release. Sure, sure. But, but but the thing is, if the tool sets don't encourage, I mean, there's a little bit of a stick and a carrot right here. But you need to have a sufficient carrot. Uh, um, sufficiently sweet carrot to be able to do this because if I'm gonna be if I'm if I'm gonna be stuck with just because I develop a part of your feature, I'm gonna be stuck now having to go three different places to manually update the documentation. It's bad enough for me to go through one. Well, well right? usually, and usually a new feature goes into master and not into. Just, I mean, you rarely really develop new features for old releases, right? If it's a bug, yeah, but, fit, I mean, so, but I think right. what both and both myself and John are saying is that okay. 
the, the there feature really without the barrier to contributing yeah. documentation. Exactly. Just, just yes. because it's um, just because it's always the last thing to do, and nobody's kind of pushing you to do it, right? So, and so, it, so basically, the idea is that we we may actually cut a cut a branch, so to speak, uh, without the branch being complete in terms of the documentation content, and a master has been created for the for the new stuff, yeah. and then. Then now we have two places that you need to go. But yeah, I think, so I think even, even if you fit, even if you discount the the um, problem of how to update older versions of the documentation, um, we still don't. We're still not very good at making sure our master of the documentation is, is up to date either, right? Like, no, we don't. Yeah. Um, and well, well, presumably, I mean, I mean, I think we should respect the release process, right? Which is that yeah. you know, if our old doc, old releases aren't well documented, well. Hopefully, we'll have a documentation review of each release saying, here's the state of the documentation. And then documentation improvements, like code improvements, should go into the next release. It seems like it's a very sensible idea. Um, and if people want to specifically write additional documentation for old releases, they're welcome to do so. But I don't think that should be our focus. I think our focus should be for producing high quality documentation for the next release. And Having making it so that the next release has the re documentation review of the next release says, oh, it's much more complete than the last release was, and it gets progressively better with each release. And considering so, that you know, we have so in the a documentation lot of releases, review, right? in the documentation review, how do we know what stuff needs to be documented? Like, who was the person who knows that? I think that that's maybe the problem right now is that a whole bunch of code went into the release, and then there's no one person who knows that all the things that need to be documented. Well, presumably, uh, I mean that's. You know, you can figure out the workflow, right? But if you look at, um, I mean, that's why you know, Thorpe thought you know, priming the pump might be a good idea. That having a documentation re requirement for every, you know, pull request, every 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 pull request in yeah. Garrett is a good idea. Um, at, at the end of the day, you can really look at all the commits for the release and say, what are they for? And you know, are, is there is there stuff that needs to be documented, and do we have the documentation? But you know, the other thing is that when it, is that it sort of if you if you if you look at this sort of a little proactively at the beginning, like oh, we have some complicated new system like SNMP support. Um, you know, well that's a big you know load of code, and but the code is only you know the first ninety percent of the work. You know, the second ninety percent is debugging. The third ninety percent is testing. Is you know having test you know, the second ninety percent is writing test code for it. Third ninety percent is is actually you know debugging it, and the fourth ninety percent is uh, doing the documentation for it. So yeah. so like basically saying, look, you know, we're not going to accept this whatever SNMP subsystem, or or if we do, we want to put a, put all of the documentation items into the backlog, and say that these guys are blockers for including the feature in the release. So anyway, that's, I guess I've sort of spoken about a lot of things in the process, but the idea, that I think, that what you're saying, I think, is that you know we want to have a process that is conducive to creating documentation. And my basic suggestion is that it sort of be forward-looking. We say, like, yeah, you know, is that each each release comes with documentation? It is what it is. And we at least tell you what it's what we think the state of the documentation is, and go through it, the effort of a documentation review. And you know, there are lots of ways of doing it, but you know, the way I do with Mininet is I just go through the change log, all the changes, all the features that, you know, all the basic, you know, new pull requests that were merged into it, what do they what do they all do? And that goes in the release. It's just sort of similar, like what are the bugs that are fixed in the release? How do you know that? So but there are lots of ways of doing it. That's just yeah. what And I hear the comments about not wanting to add extra barriers, and I agree we should be removing barriers, not adding them, but I think in my mind, this is a net removal of barriers because we've heard very clearly from the community that not having some sort of more intentionality around documentation is a barrier for everybody. Else. Yes, but the, who are you removing barriers? So you're moving, you moving, you moving the work around well, with um, a net removal of barriers, though I believe. Is yes, but the a, problem is you may be taxing the resources which are yeah. taxed. And I hear that. So and I get, I'm, I'm, gives, looking, I'm looking at it as an opportunity for other people to potentially contribute content or non technical more tech, non technical. Sure, sure. Uh, contributors potentially contributing to to um, um, to on us, right? For example, the user, user level documentation is something that a non developer could easily do. For example, <laughs> except they can't because <laughs> there's because there's they, there's no they have nothing to work with other than reading the code. That's the problem. But but yeah. Sorry, I guess it's kind of a bootstrapping problem. So there's there's like the bootstrapping problem, and then there's the one that's bootstrapped. How do we keep making it? 
things easy so everyone will continue adding more things to it in a same manner. And I guess those are two things that we need to sort of tackle separately. That kind of sounds like what's happening. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's a bootstrapping problem, right? It's, I mean, clearly the, uh, the developers. Uh, okay, so let's say let's it's really the developers that are writing this stuff. So in that case, I think it's fair to say that we're not removing work. We're just, as a matter of fact, adding work, especially if you don't have an adequate version system. So I don't think that's that's viable, really. Um, at least, so we need if if we're gonna make developers responsible for for this stuff. Um, then we need to make sure that the skits are nicely greased sure, sure. with the process for to encourage them to do this. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be we actually going to overall discourage contributions sure, sure. on, oh, us, yeah. on us at all, right? We're not going to get anything, yeah. uh, not even code, which um, might not be a terrible thing. I mean, in the sense that that it kind of like you know, in the sense that. If, if if somebody gives you a fifth, you know twenty thousand line commit, you know, like, okay, and no documentation, no explanation, you know, they just tell you, oh, this is great, we need this for our switches at you know my switch company, you know, and for running on us, we need this in our deployment, so we've, we've added this this new feature, you know, you know, uh, virtual legacy networks or or you know virtual legacy yeah. SMB support, and um, you know you know they're. they're they're happy. Like, like, it's not a good thing to accept I, something without, I, except without having I documentation for it. I completely understand. However, at least in my experience, it is the people who are the least tolerant of, of BS and, and unnecessary work are the ones who are actually producing the best work. <laughs> and so, in terms of the code. Uh, so, um, so, you, so, so I don't think that's going to act as a, as a discouragement. It's going to reward the wrong behavior still. So you're saying like requiring documentation would come no, 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 no. It, so if you don't have a nicely greased contribution process for documentation, then people who are averse to unnecessary steps are you, those are usually the good developers because that's they're sufficiently lazy that it drives them towards better design and better way of doing things. <laughs> And the people who are who are prone to just saying, "Yeah, this looks fine." Uh, people prone to cargo uh, software development, uh, cargo engineering, are the ones who are saying, "Fine, that's fine. I can just cut." Yeah, you know, basically, they're the ones who are um, who will deal with it. And uh, but those are also not the people who are producing necessarily the best code because they like that trait of identifying bullshit steps along the process. So I think our process needs to be devoid of bullshit steps. And I think manual versioning, the documentation is as a is is qualifies as a as a BS step. So that's I, I'm not at all I'm completely complete agreement with you about the need and and, and of documentation. But I want to create an environment which which fosters uh, uh, willingness to to provide it. Not, not just it cannot be just a stick. Uh, there has to be a carrot. Right. I, I, I don't really understand what you're saying about. Manual versioning of documentation being so, a barrier so to if, a barrier if, to if I have to go it's okay if I have to go through to three different places in a wiki well, to, to why, update why, something why would you that's what we have to do today so no, in order no, to no, recover no. even from a past debt okay so we're in a little bit of a situation where we have a documentation debt and so let's say let's say I want to document network configuration subsystem. Network configuration is a is a administrator slash user level documentation that shows you how to configure various parts of the system to get certain things done. Right now, in order to know how to do that, you have to read code, basically. Um, and so, and if I want to document how to do it for one seven versus one six versus one five, we don't have any of those documentations. So I mean, should we just tackle one problem right now? Given that there is no, I mean, right now one of the problems is we don't even have any documentation. Yeah. yeah. So instead of worrying about like you know how do I you know submit documentation for older pieces, should we just make it easy for someone to submit documentation when none exists? Yeah, I, I sort of like sure, the idea sure. of not worrying too much about documenting okay. legacy relates is I mean, okay. making it you know like you said like well, it says focus on the problem of documenting the current release. Sure. And exactly. that should be really easy on the wiki because you just. Go there and you say, "Oh, there's documentation missing." I just hit edit, boom, write in it. You know, it encourages contribution. Yes, but, really, okay. Really so, like so let's say we do wiki. Okay, then then it's in a wiki format, and then we find ourselves with the issue. Okay, how do we cut out uh, the version of the 
uh, of, let, let's say we don't worry about any of the past releases. Let's mm -hmm. say we worry about just this release. You document this release, and now it's on a wiki. Then, and then three months later, we need to cut a new release, basically new sets of docs. They need to be apart, because set of docs for 1.7 still have to be valid and, and not contain information for 1.8, which contains some new stuff. And so now we have a need to do <coughs> this stuff. Right, so yeah. I don't see any problem with just saying, how do you version it? Click the version button. I mean, that, okay, so okay. <laughs> I, I mean, whatever that method is for so whatever, assuming whatever okay, system, so there's two, I mean, basically, basically you fork it at that point, mm -hmm. and so you say, and it, it's the way like it's the way every you know every document it's, it's the way every documentation system I've seen works. You know where where you know you're looking at the documentation for one point seven, and you know we even we even with the wiki added like a, a header or banner for that to show you which version of the documentation you're looking at. So it's it's so, pretty it's pretty easy, right? So you're you're looking at you know just by looking at the screen which version and uh, you know you're either working in working in master, which is bleeding edge, or you're working in a stable release and just making so, changes to it. Okay. But so but before we do that, I'm perfectly fine with that. But before we do that, I would suggest we go through and at least make sure that the technical aspect of being able to version this thing really, really works, or at least works to uh, as, as expected. And and that we can then certainly deal with uh, you know I guess manual cherry picking. That's fine. But my experience, the manual cherry picking is bad enough a problem, and on top of it, the versioning does not work at all. At least not since the uh, yeah, so certain size, like, and to me that's that's a problem, and I'm, I'm somewhat averse to at least using Jira or Confluence based wiki for this. Yes, or sorry, Confluence. Yeah, I, I I hear what you're saying, which is that it sounds like there's a there's a technical problem we need to solve, uh, which is kind of orthogonal to how we would like the to the <laughs> workflow of how we'd like the workflow to work. It seems that you know the workflow seems reasonably sensible. You know, make changes in the latest version. If you want the older version, just go to the older version. And there, it's a little bit inconvenient if you make an update to a new version that applies to an older version. If you want to move that back, yeah. Um, but I, I would suggest that that's perhaps not as important as sort of forward thinking. That you know, it seems like the workflow is something we can sort of accept or live with. Sure, sure. I'm, but I, I, I'm it seems that what you're saying that you can't live with, which I agree, is that seems to be the problem is that. Is Confluence being buggy and versioning not working? And I'm just afraid that we're gonna. Sorry, start. can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just an observation. I, I'm not aware of any. Well, no bugs have been reported, at least to me, on the version until now. Uh, I believe more. Well, for sure, it's not the most convenient system in the world. We could find something better, but. <laughs> I believe honestly, and I talk first of all for myself that the first problem here is that I'm very lazy with the with updating the documentation, oh. and um, we we are not enough. Well, I'm not. I talk for myself always. I'm not enough organized to be in time uh, by the end of the release, by the moment we release, uh, to produce a good documentation in master and be in the master. I mean, of the wiki. Right, uh, and then uh, uh, just cut the branch also on the release and say that's the documentation for this release. This never happened, as far as I know. Uh, but if we try to be more, uh, I don't know, uh, better in this, uh, I don't know. I think it would work pretty well. Uh, again, there are better systems, but. It works. I think technically. the basic process that Bob was outlining is the process that we kind of have today, right? Which is mm -hmm. we write docs and master, and then at some point we do the release, we cut, we cut the version, and we fork it. Um, but like Luke was saying, it's just not getting done before that point. <laughs> well, that's, so, the, that's the main problem. Uh, that's Sorry, the problem that, 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 that we should be saying. The problem is putting effort into writing the yeah. documentation, yeah. not the tooling, but, yeah. or not the work. Not, not the, although there are process issues, which is there's no real yeah. problems. Right. But there are, yes, so there are clearly, I mean, Problem solved on all three fronts. The process, the, the, the actual putting the making a priority to put the documentation in there, but the tool itself is also a problem. And I suggest that, I mean, if this is something that Luca or somebody can help figure out, but 
if you have to push, well, we, to push the call, already... what happens? Just saying, right? Just Sorry. fairly straightforward. Yeah. Uh, I'm prepared for so, I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, we, we talk with the delays and you, I guess, I guess your voice arrived later here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I don't know, just want to say we already went through this research on confluence uh, many times. And it seems that all the possible systems were very tricky and we arrived to the conclusion that the only thing we could do uh, was what we are actually doing right now. Uh, so, technically speaking, that's the way to go on the on confluence, uh, as far as I saw in the past. Uh, so we, we we just need to be very responsive, and you know when we do a modification, it should be the responsibility of the person that did the documentation to document it, and spend time also doing that. That's the thing. And when we arrive to the release, we need to say, okay, we cut also that branch. Uh, other than that. Uh, I really don't know what to do, technically speaking. We can try with other software if you think that that would be better and more convenient for you. But I don't think, honestly, this changes the, the problem that we are very lazy writing documentation. <laughs> uh, so, just a, you know, a couple, sort of three different sort of issues, right, that, that Thomas just kind of called out, I think, is worth, worth considering, which is, you know, one is, you know, can we get a tool that works the way we want it to work? And uh, it seems that there's need of investigation and, and research as far as like, you know, can we actually do versioning of confluence or does it just not work? And if it doesn't work, can we fix it? So that, that sort of, there seems to be the tool investigation. Can we get the tool to work according, can we get our current workflow, or can we find a tool that works with our current workflow, I guess is sort of the question. And um, it seems the answer is unclear, right? Uh, Luca says it should work. Uh, Thomas says, in practice, we run into problems. So I think we should investigate that and see if we can fix it. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I'm certain maybe we should also. Yeah. That's sort of so that, that's, that's item number one is, is, you know, can we fix the tooling and see that we can fix that with our current workflow? Mm -hmm. The second issue is, uh, which is perhaps David's core issue, is are, are there changes to our honest, doc, honest development process, uh, to our release process, one might say, well, in development and release process that we can make to, uh, you know, to improve or to make it sort of more likely or, or to sort of you know, to smooth the path to creating creating uh, better documentation. And uh, sort of the documentation working group, uh, I guess, you know, to some extent, I think, uh, me, John, o, Helen talked about this for a while. And, we, you know, there's room for more discussion for sure. Uh, but there's sort of three ideas that we had for kind of work process that sort of seem to make a lot of sense. One is there should be a minimal documentation. One, one idea is a minimal documentation requirement for accepting a new feature into the, into, into us. And it, you know, this could be done as part of the release acceptance. This could be done as part of Garrett, uh, like Garrett reviews, but this idea that new features should come with documentation of some, they should, there should be some minimum standard for documentation for new features, and there should be a review of that documentation at some point. Uh, another is that we think there should be a documentation backlog, uh, a backlog of documentation, things that tasks that need to be done, and that the release probably, and that we should be able to determine, you know, are these showstopper documentation bugs that we really don't want to ship the release until we document feature X. And, having a documentation backlog is important. And it's been difficult to build that backlog for a variety of reasons. Uh, but basically, that's something that I think we need to do. But also, enforcing, or not enforcing, but considering documentation re requirements for new features will help us to create that backlog, right? We could accept a feature and say, okay, if it doesn't include, you know, it includes, you know, does the feature include the absolute minimum documentation that we need, like you know, whatever that may be, be it Java doc or be it a design document or be it a readme or some comments in the code, whatever. You know, that's one thing. But then also the question is when we accept a feature, are there additional documentation backlog items that this feature generates? And at that point, enter them into the backlog. And then the, the third thing, well, actually, I guess there are four things. Fourth thing is that we think documentation tasks should be part of sprints. 
there should be a documentation section in each iteration where we say, what are we going to do on the documentation for this iteration? And we accept document just like everything else. So if we have the documentation backlog, that feeds into documentation section of work and iterations. If we can, it may not always fit, it may not always fit in well because some some long form stuff takes a long time to write and uh, just work on it, whatever. But it'll still be in the backlog. Sure, but I think this is where we can encourage things by setting up a framework first of all, right? So, which is why I'm interested in setting up overall framework for either developer facing docs or, or user facing docs. Primarily those two is what I'm after. Because once we have the overall sort of framework or, or the overall process established, then we can set expectations. But right now we don't have that. Because I mean right now, you name a number of things and I try to name them here. Inline documentations that's already being done as part of reviews. Java docs being done as part of code reviews. CLI docs, which comprises of inline usage strings and descriptions already being done. Uh, REST API docs, which are actually done via uh, both Java docs and uh, JSON model schemas already being done. What we're not doing is the user-facing docs and developer-facing docs, features that end up facing towards the user or developer. That's not something that we have a comprehensive frame uh, for. Uh, you know, gets thrown in API bag and API docs bag, and that's it. So we have nothing I think, but we have formal ways of enforcing like Java yeah. docs, CLI, yes. and everything. Yeah. That's why I don't think we have. I don't think at least you know I yes. was not very careful about writing all the inline docs, and I don't think we are actually looking for that. Inline, inline. I mean, like for example, there is a complex piece of uh, logic, and I don't think we are actually asking people to you know write a doc to. Oh, like yeah, in my like code reviews, if there's a long method, if it's not intuitive, if the, then, then I, then I, at least I try to comment on breaking it apart. Because the, the inline documentation comprises of code and comments. Right, right. So if you have readable code, you don't need to have comments. Yeah, but if you if you have something that's particularly complex, then by all means, yeah. tell me what you're doing I mean, here in plain English. English. It's definitely uh, useful. So so. At least I thought that that's being done. Now we could do better, but I think yeah. we have, have framework for it being done. Correct. And so, it's not. so what do you mean when you say framework for like the user facing jobs? So you're talking yeah. about like you know, administrative manual for Hummingbird. Yeah, right. Don't so, have that. Yeah. Where do I put stuff? What kind of network configurations you can do? Right. What kind of component configurations right. we support? Yeah. Something yeah. that the developer doesn't have to check out the bloody code. Uh, and can yeah. basically there's something that can be shipped <laughs> along with the runtime bits, a PDF document that they can open and read. Yeah. We so have none of that. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it would be good to have. We, that. Yeah, we have the beginnings of that like scattered across the wiki, but yeah, you're right. That needs to be kind of brought together. That's yeah. that's my big that's, problem with the that's what I think we should have. Yeah. And and if it can, so it, uh, it doesn't matter what the original offering EDM is, whether it's wiki, whether it's PDF, whether it's Google Docs, or whether it's some sort of other meta as GML based language, I really don't care as long as it's we have something that can be technically versioned, whether it's through brute force mm -hmm. or through some more elaborate elegant means, uh, and. Uh, and so you're saying that once we have that framework, it'd be easier for either the developer or someone else who's trying to use that yes. feature to come around. That's what I'm already talking about, about establishing that. How do we go about establishing that to basically create an on ramp like for this stuff to yeah, yeah, right. exactly bootstrap yeah. it? Yeah. Because it's a bootstrapping issue, right? Yeah, I guess. So, I mean, I, I, presumably it's not very hard to test this out. Because, I mean, in, like, it's, it's Another way to think of like the wiki is okay, we've been testing out the wiki for how many months now since you know we started writing the wiki, I guess like two years or something now. And we're seeing these issues, maybe it's because of the tools, maybe it's because you know, whatever else, but you know, testing this. I have no problem. I mean, if it's the wiki, it's perfectly fine. Uh -huh. as, as long as it's technically feasible to create a separate snapshot, I'm perfectly fine with adapting our process. To do that, we still need to go through the effort of creating the skeletal structure. Yeah, now, the, our wiki is you guys trying to do that by organizing the wiki, but I think there's more work to be done, especially to to make sort of target user targeted um, or persona targeted uh, documentation. Yeah. So, so currently, uh, but so, no, no, I, I agree with what you're saying, and I also think that having versions control docs as you know some kind of markup. Is a nice way to have you know offline docs that are you know elegantly version control docs on this code base, and you know 
if you know trying it out you know doesn't work out then it doesn't work out if it turns out it's like you know of a lesser barrier for people to you know actually start documenting things then that's great too and you know, I, I, frankly, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with using Wiki. I actually like Wiki, but I wonder for something like this, if it would be better to use some sort of an SGML type. Uh, I mean, we can totally test this out and just see for a while. I mean, I don't think that's an insane way to see if it, if it's actually effective or not. Because I mean, but still, you know, pour the information from Wiki. At least extract the relevant content from Wiki and start populating this this other sort of a user or more or user oriented uh, document. Whether it's also in a, uh, another section in Wiki or whether it's uh, um, whether it's some sort of other format, still that for discussion. Yeah, but I think we're saying that we're missing this framework, which is which is going to be a manual process to generate, right? Yes. Like someone, some person, or a team of people have to sit down. And yeah, I mean, you writing the book. a skeleton and yeah, writes and stuff, right? Yeah. Writing with book with a with basically, you know, um, some hopefully some sort of a, uh, automated assistance for some of the more boilerplate and dynamic developing parts. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always need for the narrative, right? Yeah. And we kind of did something similar with the bootstrapping with the wiki anyways. Yes. So I mean, you know, we can pick a tool and you know, some people or a person can just. You know, Ideally, you can just like suck out all the information from the wiki, convert it, and then you know, dump it in the Google format or something. I don't know, but. Uh. And, and so as long as we can create a snapshot, if you, if you figure out a way where maybe we're doing something wrong with Confluence Wiki, if you can figure out how to make a snapshot for for the whole wiki or at least for a portion of it, um, then we can set up the framework for user docs or developer docs uh, within the confines of the wiki. That's the, that's the time. And make probably migration easier because you don't have to redo the markup necessarily. I mean, there are several different tools for it. Like one that comes to mind is Docbook XML and you know maybe like Sphinx or something. Or you know, there's probably many others out there for yeah. static content generation. So. Sorry, Thomas. I'm not sure I understood the thing of the snapshot. You were saying if we can find what what is snapshot. Uh, I missed your question. What was that? I, I said I, I didn't understand as well what you said. Uh, for you mentioned something about the wiki snapshot taking a confluence snapshot. Yeah. So what I was saying before is it, we need to, to verify technically that uh, that the snapshot mechanism continues to work. We couldn't make it work. Okay. I'm of emu. I don't know why that was. It was basically the the snap emu snapshot got corrupted, and we were ne never able to it, through repeated attempts. Brian and I were never able to successfully create a snapshot of uh, of our wiki for a new a new workspace, and so we. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. So yeah, probably Falcon or Golden Eye. Anyway, um, I think we beat this horse. To <laughs> well, I actually, actually yeah, didn't, right. didn't get to, to finish what, yes. I, was saying, what sorry, I was saying. Sorry. So, but I checked out a bit to sort of write it in the text. Um, <laughs> the, the, our kind of fourth recommendation to the workflow was to have a per release documentation review, which at the very least, which would try to assess the state of the documentation and not necessarily enforce it, but basically say, like, look, okay, you know, basically produce the documentation overview that somebody can. You know, update the documentation overview slash roadmap, basically. You know, our update, you know. Guide to the documentation. Just sort of make sure that the things like the, uh, you know, not just the release notes, but a guide to the documentation and say, making sure that's kind of updated so that if somebody gets the release, they know where to go. And they also know, like, and sort of assessing the quality of the documentation, saying, you know, we know that we know that in this case, when these features are well documented, or you know, we think we think a lot of stuff. In, basically, so the people saying, you know, we think this stuff has okay documentation, but we think we've also added new features that maybe don't have any documentation and will be documented in the next release. And they have, <clears throat> but they have backlog items for them; they just haven't been completed. But basically, assess the state of document of documentation, both by sort of looking at the documentation that we have, and you know, saying are there any obvious omissions or deficiencies. <clears throat> and also looking at the backlog, like 
are there additional important backlog items really that were you know documentation debt incurred by this release that allow it to be paid off later? And it's documenting that it's like, oh, we added a new intent system, but it's not documented yet. We hope to document it in the next release. Um, but you can check out the README that as part of the commit or whatever, something like that. So so that people sort of have somewhere somewhere to go. So I think this idea of a documentation review per release, the fact that we don't have one is makes it really difficult for us to assess the quality of the documentation. But I think doing it at least per release would be a really good idea. At least that's I think we what we were talking about. That's a good point. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think that might be one of the one of the biggest things that's going to help us make sure that we're not missing large pieces of documentation. Um, and now that we have a more of a process around releases like feature freeze, code freeze, like bug fixes, and so on, we can kind of easily fold it in mm -hmm. more than we could. At your yeah, university. I like that. I'm not sure you are aware of that, but the wiki is also uh, backup every day. So, uh, and we keep we have a script that keeps uh, the the previous week uh, backups, uh, last month backup, and like three months ago backup. So, uh, it's it's not the most convenient thing, and we will figure out why uh, you had those problems. But in case really of emergency, uh, yeah, we take also a backup of that. Look, uh, if you don't mind, let's take them on offline before they <coughs> leaves. I just wanted sure. to check on something. And the next item on the agenda was supposed to be the honors built, uh, honors built event agenda. Is it something we can move to next week? Or? Of course, of course. Yeah, I would just encourage everybody to take a look. There's a, a kind of a, a schedule for the three days that we're proposing on um, that link. Take a look, and yeah, if you have feedback. Definitely want to make sure this event is something that provides value to everybody, so that involves you know getting your feedback and, and ideas and suggestions before uh, we're going to have to start finalizing things pretty quickly here because now that it's September, this event's only two months away, so yeah. we're finalize it soon. But yeah, I think next week would be fun. Okay, good. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, David. Yeah, sorry, um, we can put it on the list for next week. Cool. All right. Thanks. Anyway, Luca, sorry I didn't mean to cut you short. I just want to make sure uh, David had a. Um, Limit our limit because of train. So, yeah, no, absolutely, no worries. Uh, let's take it offline and let's see what right. we can do. So, okay, just so just to wrap up on the previous subject. So, uh, look, I will take a look at uh, at the viability or some issues uh, of the snapshot mechanism. We can deal with that separately. And I, I do like Bob's uh, said uh, at the end about. Um, about the release uh, level documentation preview. All right, I think it'd be great to yeah. move things forward if we tried to do that. And I, I can even possibly help with some of that. Yeah. And I think then, in terms of setting overall, uh, setting up the framework, overall, just sort of framework for a user versus a developer type documentation, I mean, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to wait for a decision for what tool we're going to use. We can start doing it in the confines of the yeah. idea right now, right? Yeah. At least to establish it, start discussing it, and then we can figure out, you know, if you do need to move it to something different, whether it's wiki or what, we can do that. At a, at a, we can do that then, right? So yeah, yeah, I agree. I can look at this, but not before one or two weeks. I need to finish before things are of this print and of this release. Then we can take a look at that. Problem. I think I think these two things can proceed in parallel. Yeah, I guess okay. the point here is to try to worry about what the what the overall process really will be, and uh, and um, and sort of overall structure of the content will be for those two different documents, and then we can um, um, we can adapt our process to them. Sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I guess as usual. Uh, one topic per, uh, per <laughs> meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody.